So hey, it's 2024 and I've decided to try a new experiment. Welcome to the Sanjay Says Video Podcast. We're going to see how this goes. I'm just going to read out articles that I've written for my newsletter. Uh, for people who prefer audio, people who want to see me make funny faces or hand gestures. Um, while I'm reading my stuff. So this isn't new content, although I will tend to ad-lib a little bit about the content that I wrote earlier. So and you'll kind of see me reading it. So I don't know, maybe you'll find that entertaining. So without further ado, here we go. My first post of the year was about not making resolutions. See, it was New Year's Eve and I was sitting uh, on my laptop trying to find something to read that didn't have anything to do with resolutions or looking back at 2023. And uh, I already believe in systems, not goals. My life is going pretty great right now realization that came after a little bit of um, angst and a bit of spiraling uh, through the middle part of the year. But right now, things are fantastic. So oh, I'm going to try a little animation here because I heard this is something I can do. Uh, let's see here. My life is fantastic. How exciting is that? Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so my son asked me yesterday how I would rate 2023 and I gave it a solid 8 out of 10. I asked him for his rating and he said eh, 7 out of 10. I said only a 7? I mean you loved that week that you had with your cousin in the teen club of the cruise ship and you loved the week that you spent at Muskoka Woods. You only give it a 7? And he said well you know I think I'm a bit of a hard marker plus there was that week you made me spend in Europe where all I did was eat in restaurants uh, that you and mom wanted to explore. All right you know I loved that week in Europe with the family. But then again, if I ask myself how many of my best moments of my childhood involved my parents, uh, yeah, I'm not in the top 10. So this morning, though, um, first day of New Year's, I asked my sister, uh, hey, Ange, what would you score 2023? And she said, eh, it's an 8 out of 10. Look, thing, it's a work in progress. Things are fine. There's always stuff to do. But there's this exercise that my business coach gave me that's super exciting and it's way better than resolutions or looking back um, at just the last year. And I said, what do you mean just the last year? So she said, here's the idea. Divide your life into segments. Like she chose decades, I'll choose decades. So I have six decades. That feels like a lot. It's a fucking lot. Okay, I have six decades uh, of life experience. Break them up, 0 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. And just think of, you know, some defining failures or things that you consider to be like not so good aspects of your life from that decade. And then here's the magical part. You think, how did that failure or that miserable situation affect your future outlook or your future self? What positive things came out of that adversity? Boom. For me, even as I was listening to her doing this mental exercise, I, I was thinking myself is about some of my biggest failures. And I started thinking about things like being bullied um, or not getting into the university I wanted to get into or not getting the girl I wanted to go out with me to go out with me. And I realized, wow, those things actually resulted in some really positive outcomes later in life. Like I became, so, okay, let me do the exercise for you, right? It's like you take the failure of each segment, think about what you learned and how that improved your future segments, okay? Here we go. So for me, my version, zero to 10, I was painfully shy and I was bullied. I didn't really have any friends at school. I had friends at home, right? Neighborhood friends, but I didn't have any friends at school. Um, and when I think about how that affected me later in life, it made me a bit of a social loner and it made me okay being my own person. And, you know, I guess it made me a leader because nobody wanted me to follow them. And so... I just led myself and after I did that long enough and became confident other people started following me and I became a leader so hey chalk one up for social isolation and bullying uh, then from 11 to 20 all right I was 16 years old I asked this one girl that I was fixated on to go to the prom with me and she said no literally she said uh, I'm washing my hair like you're washing your hair on prom. I found out years later that that's a standard diss. I should have known better. Anyway, whatever. Fuck it. I didn't go to my prom. I applied to MIT 
for engineering, I got rejected. And I've thought, when I think back to my teen years, high school, and I th I've always thought of it as being like this miserable failure time, right? And, and it really wasn't. Uh, you know, I had lots of friends. I was starting to make friends at school. And those rejections actually helped me cope with rejection later in life and made me audaciously ambitious, um, including meeting my current wife, who is so far out of my league that 17 years later, I'm still amazed that we're together. Uh, 21 to 30, I was unhappily married. I was married at 20, or engaged at 24, married at 25, divorced at 30, lots of blame to go around. Um, we didn't communicate enough. We had different expectations out of life. You know, I wish her the best. We were better apart than we were together. And out of that relationship, I got my daughter, who's one of my best friends, one of my staunchest supporters, love her to death. Um, and I also learned you know, how important relationships are, what a bad relationship looks like. And now when I have problems with my wife now, with Rishika, <clears throat> I fix it, communicate better, um, understand what a good relationship looks like. And so I, and I owe that to the learnings from the first marriage. Um, 31 to 40. Wow. Well, okay, 31. Just as I was getting divorced, I also started a business that went bankrupt declared corporate bankruptcy, declared personal bankruptcy. And then on top of it all, I was depressed and got di diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which pissed me off because it meant that even the good times were part of some kind of a disease. I don't know how much I believe that anymore. But here's the thing. The years coming out of bankruptcy, I had a job I liked. I was climbing uh, a ladder. Those were some of the most exhilarating and happy years of my life. And when I think about the bipolar disorder, well, my whole life up to that point was a bit of a up and down. And I discovered this medication with this great psychiatrist it's called the Motrogene, uh, the medication, not the psychiatrist. <laughs> he was Dr. Sagar Parikh. Uh, and the Motrogene's changed my life. I've been on this medication for 20 years and I like myself. So moving on. Uh, 41 to 50. Well, by then I had started audiobooks.com. I was fired from the company that I co-founded and I ended up suing my former business partner. It didn't lead anywhere. I ended up learning a lot about employment law that's actually helped me in my uh, future career. Uh, but more than anything, I won that battle when I stopped caring. I was so angry. I was so angry when I got fired. But then I just got, got, got over it after a couple of months, let it go. And a year later, you know, the company wasn't doing well. There was no more animosity or legal battles going on. I managed to buy back the company. A year later, a year later, after I was fired from my own company, I walked back in with the main, with the key to the front door because I owned the whole thing um, with a new business partner. Thank you, Ryan Van Barneveld. Um, and now we move to the current decade, which is 51 to 58, not quite finished yet. Uh, losing money, losing sleep. 2021, end of 2021, not a good time. Restaurants losing money from COVID, had some bad business, other bad business investments. Um, and I made some bad, or I didn't make bad investments in psychedelics. So the entire psychedelic industry had a meltdown. I lost $20 million in two years and lost a lot of sleep. Reflected on it a lot. And I am a better person now. I've, my net, my, my personal value um, and my, how good I feel about myself isn't as tied to net worth as it was before. Um, and I've learned how to manage my emotions much better than I had before, and I'm sleeping better than I ever did. So net, net, positive experience. And because of the risk management lessons I learned from bankruptcy a couple of decades earlier, I took a lot of risks, but I didn't take any risks that were going to be fatal. So, hey, I'm okay, just in case you're worried. So there you have it. If you take just the headlines, you know, bullied, fired, divorced, bankrupt, I could say, woe is me all day long, but I actually have a great life. I have a fantastic life. Uh, and it isn't despite those obstacles, it's specifically because of those obstacles that I have the life that I have now. So change the story you tell yourself about yourself, your childhood, your failures, your pain. You're awesome. And that's how you got here. Thanks.